All right, so what I'm going to show you guys right now is how to 3D print something. So you've designed it on Tinkercad. I've designed this very simple rectangular prism. It's not so exciting, but I'm going to show you how you can download it from Tinkercad and 3D print it. So I'm in Tinkercad. I'm using Firefox on this computer. It seems to work better. So I'm going to go here to design. And then one of the things in the menu is download for 3D printing. So I'm going to click on that and it gives me a few options. Our 3D printer understands STL files. So that's the most common type of 3D printable object file. So I'm going to click on that and it automatically downloads into the downloads folder here in the bottom with whatever name um, Tinkercad has given the file. Okay, so if I click here, I can see uh, for some reason it's called this the Sizzling Crunk Sango. And I, if I look down here in my downloads folder, it's also called that. Okay, so that's step one, just to download it. Step two is to open this program right here called Cura. Uh, it's the big C in the bottom in the dock. Okay, and this is what we get. This is the program that understands the STL file and then sends it to the 3D printer for printing. So the first thing you need to do when you come into this program is load your STL file. So you push the load button and then by default it goes into the downloads folder and by default right now the top thing is the most recent thing that was downloaded, the sizzling crunk sango. So I'm going to click that and say open and then what I'll see next is my exciting rectangular prism here on the, um, the print plate. This represents so this um, here represents this print plate on the 3D printer here. They're exactly the same shape and size. So if I decide to put this thing in the middle here, when it 3D prints, it'll print in the middle here on this 3D printer, okay? There are a bunch of settings we have to look at here really quickly. I'm gonna very quickly explain what they do and you almost never t need to change any of them. The first is how thick each layer is and 0.2 millimeters is the default. The shell thickness is how thick the outside layer is, and by default it's 0.8, okay? Um, the next one down here uh, is the fill density. That's how much plastic it puts inside. So shapes can be hollow, right, uh, to save plastic. And right now it's set to fill it to about 40%. Um, the 20% is probably the best. Um, it uses the least amount of material. The next thing is the print speed. So right now it's going to print at 40 millimeters per second. That's pretty good. The lowest you want to go here is 10, which is pretty slow. And the fastest you want to go is probably 80. If you're printing anything that's complex, 80 will be too fast. 40 is sort of like a magic middle number. For this, because it's not complex, it's just a rectangle, we're going to tell it to print at 80. It's going to print super fast. I can tell right now it can print this thing in three minutes. Okay. So right there, it t and it tells me it's going to use one gram of material or 0.27 meters of filament. Okay, so the next setting here is the temperature that it melts the plastic at, which is 208 degrees Celsius. We can change that, but we don't need to. Okay, if you're going to print something that has an overhang part that, um, so for example, uh, see this piece here? See how it has this part that over has an overhang? Okay, it can't 3D print into nothing, so it needs to build a support structure underneath it. Right here, it talks about support structures, and it can build support structures everywhere to hold up things that have overhangs. You could just leave that on to everywhere if you want. In this case, can you look at that shape? Do I need support structures for that? No. No. Really. No. Because it's just a rectangle and it's right on the ground. So that's a, like the super easiest thing to print. So I could choose none here. If you're not sure, the best thing to choose is everywhere, okay? So if you're like, uh, I don't know, just choose everywhere, it'll work, okay? Does that make sense? Um, you never change the filament diameter because it's already set up, okay? And flow, 100%, nozzle size, four millimeters, don't change any of these settings. So they're all specifically tuned to the size of filament and the type of nozzle we have. So those are the settings. And just to go back over them very quickly, the only things you'll almost ever need to change are the following. Fill density, or sorry, print speed. You can make it faster or slower, okay? Uh, yeah, and you might wanna change the support structures. And for our class, there's really nothing else you need to change, okay? So print speed and whether or not you need support structures, that's really it.
Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go over to the 3D printer here for a second. Beep, beep, and, beep, 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 excuse me, Allie. Right here on the side. So if you come right here at me, there's a little um, rectangle window there. In there is an SD card, a tiny micro SD card. So you can just get in there with your fingers and pull it out. Okay. There we go. And we come over to the computer. Here on the computer, we have a micro SD card adapter. So right here on the side. See there? So I can pull that out. And then what I can do is I can put the micro SD card into the mic into the SD card adapter, give it a good push to make sure it's in there. Okay. And then put it back in the SD card slot. On my computer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this information to the SD card, and then the um, the 3D printer is going to print it out, okay? So I pop that back in. That's a great question. How do we save it? I'm going to show you right now. So what, I, what I'm going to do in my finder first is make sure that that thing appeared. So see there where it says Untitled, which is not a very clever name for a disk, but that's what it's called. So I want to make sure Untitled is there. So the only reason I clicked on the finder was to make sure it's there. It's there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. So I'm going to say File. And we want to save G-code. G-code is the type of code that our 3D printer understands. So I'm going to say save G-code. It's going to ask me where to save it. It wants to give it that same funny name, but we can't give it that name. So the first thing we're going to do is click on Untitled. And you can see there's a file on there called auto0.g. That's the file name we have to give it if we want it to 3D print. If we call it anything else, it will not 3D print. So all I do is I double click there where it says auto0.g and it automatically renames my file. And then I push save, it's gonna say, hey, there's already a file called that. Do you wanna replace it? Of course we do. So we're gonna hit say replace. Down here it says saved. And you can see it's saved on untitled and it's called auto0.g. We can close that message. And then the last thing we need to do on the computer here before we 3D print is go back to the finder and we have to eject that disk. Okay? So I push the little eject icon here and I just make sure it disappears. Once it's disappeared, I can take, you only need the, the tiny chip. Okay? So I took that out the side there. So I just whoop, pulled it out of the adapter. And it needs to go in the 3D printer face up. This is the hardest part and you guys can practice this in a second after we're done making the video. All right. So it needs to go in here and it needs to go with the little um, contacts facing up okay and it literally just you have to it's easy to do this wrong but you just want to feel it being grabbed onto so you can see it there and then I just give it a push okay all right so now we're ready to 3d print to have a 3d print all we do is we plug in the 3d printer okay the, our 3d printer isn't fancy enough to have an on off switch so we just plug it in we can tell it's working because on this 3D printer, the fan, it starts, turns, the fan on. turns on. Okay, that on this 3D printer over here, the fan doesn't turn on. They're just slightly different models and they work slightly differently. Uh, yeah, that's okay. It's working. It'll turn on as it starts to 3D print. So we've turned it on, and that's that's pretty much it. If you're printing something really complicated, you sometimes have to take hairspray and spray it here. So if you 3D print your thing and it's not sticking, you might just wanna mist it with some hairspray like that, okay? And that'll help it stick to the, um, the painter's tape. Oh, it tape. smells good. If the painter's tape ever rips off, we have to put more painter's tape on, okay? Why? Why? Because what we don't want to do, we don't wanna melt our plastic to the build plate, Okay, it, some, it would make it hard to clean up. If, I, if we make a big mess, and sometimes 3D printing makes a big mess, because it doesn't always work. We could just peel the painter's tape off, and then it's clean, and we, and we start again. Whereas if we were melting plastic right onto the build plate here, and it made a big mess, we'd have to spend a lot of time scraping and cleaning it up, which is not a lot of fun. Okay, so in a second, it's going to start to 3D print. Um, so you literally, what it's doing... The reason you might be thinking, why isn't it 3D printing, Mr. Pro? It's this just is loading. Boring. It's it's actually not loading. That was a good guess. It's heating, it's heating up. It's heating up, yeah. So as soon as it reaches 208 degrees Celsius, it'll start to 3D print. So what it does when it starts to 3D print after it reaches 208 degrees Celsius, it homes itself. So it goes and you can see you can see the light lighting up on the top of that sensor. That sensor is just the build plate sensor. It's making sure that it knows. Um, where the build line? plate is. It doesn't want to go past the build plate and it doesn't want to print into the middle of the air or it won't work. So here we go. Is it just outlining? It's pretty intelligent. It's only as smart as it's been told to be though. Oh, okay. So the people who invented it are smart. 
And it's just doing what it's been told. Okay. Like it's a child. So the first, the first few passes it does, it just draws a perimeter around it what like it's, what it's making. So you can see, it's got sort of an outline, and then it draws everything on the inside. Let's say you made something that is bigger than that rectangle, and it doesn't draw big enough perimeter. You know, there's not, it's not printing properly, and you can stop it. So right away, if we if we knew that something was wrong, what we could do is come over here and just pull the power out, scrape the material off, and start again. Um, it's only going to do exactly what it's been told to do in the chip. So can it ever be this tall? Can it be this tall? Yeah. Oh yeah. It can print things that are tall. What about the uh, Not quite, because see this oh. this fork screw thing here is it can only go up that high. So, so how high would that be? How high? Uh, I don't know. The thing is, um, you build, like, when you print power. things that are very big, Dua, it takes a long time. So I printed something that was uh, about this big, Dua. It took a week. A week? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I was printing it with go? super high accuracy, but. You should have. And anyway, that's pretty much it. If you want to film to the end of the printing, you're welcome to. But if you're done, you can stop. You should have done a time lapse. Last thing I want to say is sometimes it's hard to get this off. You can see it's stuck onto the tape. Uh, what we can do is use this little putty trowel thing and you can just, you want to try your best not to rip the tape because then you have to add more tape and right now I don't have any more tape. So you can just kind of stick it under there and don't pull pull really hard, just kind of a little bit at a time, wiggle wiggle, wiggle wiggle, wiggle, nudge. wiggle, nudge it, nudge it, and then boom, there it is. We didn't rip the tape, we don't have to replace the tape. Take off this too. So that just, you know, pull it up, scrape it off, and that's it.